Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. It would be much appreciated. I've had my wee weekend off. I was at Clash at the Castle, of course. Um, but it's good to be back. It's good to talk about Celtic once more. So apologies for the lack of content over the last couple of days. But we're about to get into what hopefully will be a busy summer starting now. So if you want to keep up to date, you know what to do. Head down below, hit that like and subscribe button. Let me talk about something from Clash at the Castle very, very quickly. Little did I ever think that we would have a Celtic and WWE crossover, but here we are. So it's part of the news today. And if you know me well, if you know Ryan Fitzsimons, if you know Ryan 118 on a personal level, or even just from afar, you will know there's one thing and one person that comes nearly just as close as Celtic Football Club in the list of things I love. If there's one thing that comes close to the love I have for Celtic, it's the love I have for CM Punk. So seeing these images over the weekend, that's... that's gorgeous. I just love it. Never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined seeing CM Punk sitting there with the Celtic gear on, but nonetheless, never say never, dreams do come true. Um, a great weekend, of course. If you don't have a clue about wrestling, if you don't like wrestling, if you think it's faking for children, you will be wondering, what does this even mean? Put it this way, CM Punk, good guy. That's all you need to know. Hail, hail, Phil. Love you. Love you to bits. Let's talk about Celtic, shall we? So I'm sitting here on Sunday the 16th of June 2024 without any concrete transfer information to tell you. There is no indications that Celtic are set to make an imminent signing anytime soon. It's just the same old rumours floating around right now. Quite disappointing, you could say. Um, and part of me wants to sit here and say... And, and, and I think the way I'm looking at it, if you're asking me personally how I feel about how business has been conducted so far in this window, I would say I'm not all too bothered. After all, the official window doesn't open to the 1st of July where we can transfer and bring players in from around the world. Right now, it's just the domestic window that's open. We've got a few more weeks. Obviously, there's an international tournament on as well, which affects business because a lot of the best players in the continent are taking part at said tournament. It's not easy to get things going very, very quickly when you're trying to sign the right calibre of player. But obviously last year we had this exact same situation and I remember sitting there saying to you all in front of this very camera, be patient, believe in the manager, believe in the recruitment and players will come and the window will end up at success. It did not end up a success. In fact, we had a terrible summer transfer window this time last year and I urged for patience then and it didn't work then. So, listen, you can form your own opinion. I know some people get, are getting frustrated, but the 2023-24 campaign has only very recently come to an end. The Euros are underway. Celtic will get their business done when the time is right to do business. And hopefully, starting tomorrow, when the fresh week starts, when it's Monday the 17th of June 2024, we'll start to hear a lot more about some incoming signings. But for now, things remain quiet. However, we do have a couple of things to talk about. So, stay patient, it's coming. We have our latest update on Matt O'Reilly and his potential departure from Celtic Football Club this summer. Of course, we are anxiously awaiting the bad news that Matt O'Reilly is leaving the club. Um, we mostly all, I think, anticipate it to happen. It probably will happen, but it's gone kind of quiet over the past couple of weeks, and that's probably down to the fact that, yeah, the Euros are on. But today, an interesting report emerged from Spain, which might give an indication as to how much money Matt O'Reilly might get Celtic, the valuation at which the club hold him to, and hopefully will attain when he leaves the club. This was an article that was published this afternoon from Spanish outlet AS, who have said Celtic value Matt O'Reilly at 40 million euros. Atletico back in and amongst the rumours for Matt O'Reilly, it says Atletico has him among its future prospects. He was already trying to come last season. Atletico were trying to reach and negotiate a deal then and will try it again now. 
following a Saul contract termination. Apologies for the very loose Google translation, but the article basically says that Atletico will continue to reinforce its midfield, and that includes them keeping a very close eye on Celtic midfielder Matt O'Reilly, a player who they wanted uh, throughout last season, apparently had an offer rejected for around 21 million euros when Celtic had him valued at 29 million euros, but now Celtic reportedly asking for even more, knowing that he will be a sought after player and that he may end up leaving and reportedly as the headline suggests, Celtic volume at around £40 million. £40 million, of course, equating to roughly a figure of £35 million. That's what Celtic want to get for Matt O'Reilly. We knew the club were in a commanding position when coming uh, to selling Matt O'Reilly, when coming to negotiations surrounding Matt O'Reilly. He's got a long stay at Celtic Football Club. Celtic have all the chips, all the cards, they're in total control at this table of transfers when it comes to the buyout of Matt O'Reilly. 40 million euros would shatter the Scottish transfer record and Matt O'Reilly is a player who deserves to shatter the Scottish transfer record. I think it's incredible business, incredible thinking for Celtic to try and go and get 35 million pounds for the player and it's exactly what they should be getting for the player. I don't need to go over um, how good Matt O'Reilly was last season. The stats speak for themselves. The performances speak for themselves. He was undoubtedly the best player in Scotland, and I don't care how many awards Lawrence Shanklin might have to prove that he is. We all know the truth that Matt O'Reilly is by far and wide the best player in Scotland at the moment, and he's been one of the most talented players to come through the doors of any Scottish football club in the past decade. Um, his quality is second to none. He's levels above every player in this league, and Celtic have every right with the length of the contract, with the quality of the player, and with the current financial climate in football to command such money as €40 million. Euros. I remember at the start of the transfer window, or maybe just before then, I think it was towards the end of last season, there was a report that came out that Celtic will try to push as close to €50 million Euros for Matt O'Reilly, and when I posted that video, the comment section was, main, uh, was met with a lot of jealous and um, I'm going to say unknowledgeable fans from opposite clubs, not just Rangers, but clubs uh, around the country. People were coming in and going, Matt O'Reilly is not even the best player in Scotland, Lauren Shanklin's the best player, he's not worth 50 million, that's a joke, use it if you're not, ha ha, etc, etc. And I just laughed at the comments. Um, it is coming from a place of jealousy, uh, and it's coming from a place of, of misunderstanding, a misunderstanding to what the, the current climate is like in football. And nobody is saying that Matt O'Reilly is a £50 million pounds player. Uh, well, not, I, and I still maintain to this day, not many footballers in this world are a £50 million pound player, let alone someone who's playing in the Scottish Premiership. That's obviously the case. But this misunderstanding and this jealousy that comes from Rangers supporters, Heart supporters, anybody else who dares to laugh at Celtic even, um, dreaming of the notion of this much money, for those that laugh at it, th this isn't a case of how much the player is worth because of the, 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 the ability with the ball at his feet. This is how much he's worth to Celtic Football Club. This is how much the club value him uh, and his importance to the football side. And how difficult it's going to be to replace him and generally just, you know, for how good he is, if teams want him, we should be rinsing them. If Manchester United go out to pay £90 million for Anthony, who is one of the worst wingers that I have ever seen at Manchester United, if they will go out and spend £40, £50, £60 million, pound players, uh, 60 million pounds on dud players, Celtic should be able to command this. This is a thing that Celtic have missed out on and have undervalued themselves at for, for years now. At times when Celtic should have commanded much higher fees for players who were wanted down south or across the continent, Celtic should have been rinsing clubs for more money. And now is the time for Celtic to do it. Uh, we'd already been left behind in an ever-evolving football world. A world where 
the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Um, and that's not just in daily life, that's when it comes to football as well. Celtic are being left behind. And when you watch clubs like Brighton rob Chelsea for hundreds of millions of pounds and Ajax rob in Manchester United for the exact same, why can and why shouldn't be Celtic doing the same thing? So this place of jealousy always makes me laugh because Rangers don't have a player they can command 40, 50 million euros for. Guess what? Celtic do, and we should be doing it. Nobody's saying that he's a 50 million, 40 million pound player, but he's worth that to Celtic and he's worth that to every one of our supporters. Um, he will go for a record fee. He will break it, no matter if it's 25, 30, 40, 45 million euros. He will break this record um, and, and he should be because he's just that good. So there is a number of clubs who have been rumoured uh, to circulate the the um, situation of Matt O'Reilly right now. Uh, Atletico Madrid being one of them, Inter Milan maybe back in the mix. We've also heard that there is interest down south, including a couple of lower end Premier League clubs as well as higher end Premier League clubs as well, because there was that story that top six clubs were looking at him, and recently Roma apparently entered the frame as well. So there is no shortage of clubs looking at the potential of bringing Matt O'Reilly in this summer. We'll be here to report it as it happens when an official bid is made 40 million pounds is what Celtic or 40 million euros I should say is what the club value him at how much do you think the club will actually get and final kind of small story for today of course we heard all of that talk surrounding Martin Dubravka last week he was being linked with a move to Celtic as our quest for a new goalkeeper goes on I have covered the Martin Dubravka stuff uh, from head to toe there is definitely legitimacy in it um, and I have no doubt that he's probably a keeper that's on a list somewhere at Celtic um, when looking for a goalkeeper I don't want to sound like a broken record repeating the same points I've made. I don't think it will be the one that Celtic go for. However, during the weekend, Martin Dubravka has made a come get me sort of call. Um, but I think it just adds more to the point that I made earlier in the week. I don't think Celtic actually are going to go for Dubravka. Uh, and I think it's proven in his comments. Let's go through the comments, shall we? So in an interview with the tabloid newspapers, Martin Dubravka said that he would consider concrete offers from Celtic. He's told his agents that if there was a concrete offer, um, then he would consider it. But at this stage, it's only some noises. He clarified there has been no official contact, anything like that. I think this is a bit of a come get me plea to not only Celtic, but interested parties, clubs that would be willing to take him on, considering his place at Newcastle has basically vanished in front of his eyes. But um, I think that means Dubravka's wanting to move more than Celtic, to be quite honest. And I don't necessarily believe that Celtic are the only people and the only club that he's subliminally trying to attract here. Um, so I don't read too much into this interview. Of course, being replaced and not only replaced, but double replaced at Newcastle means he needs a move. So this interview is sort of inevitable. Anyway, that was that. So there you go, there is your updates for today. It has been a quiet weekend, but usually the weekends are quiet at this stage in the summer. Um, most news will probably start rolling out Monday, maybe even tonight. Um, so just keep an eye out, we'll be here on the channel as soon as there's something to report. But for now, that's it from me. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed, I hope you've had a great weekend. I'll be back in the channel tomorrow and we'll be here all week, so don't worry, there will be no shortage of content. Uh, like and subscribe, subscribe, God bless CM Punk, and God bless yourselves. Cheerio.